Today we're rounding out our coverage of DLSS4 and FSR4 with a look at how the upscalers compare at 1080p, which is still a very popular resolution in 2025 probably due to that pesky issue of entry-level GPU stagnation. It's also a resolution that tends to cause the most issues for upscaling as the render resolution when enabling DLSS or FSR can quickly fall to just 720p or even lower. Without much data to work with, historically this has led to poor results, and in some games we've recommended you avoid upscaling entirely at 1080p. But is that true now that we've got the much more advanced DLSS4 and FSR4 technologies? Well, let's find out. Like our previous videos, all of the FSR4 examples were captured at 1080p using the Radeon RX 9070 XT, while all of the other examples were captured using the GeForce RTX 5090. I've used a selection of games, all of which had settings such as motion blur, grain, vignette, and chromatic aberration disabled, and sharpness has also been set to zero for upscaling. All DLSS3 examples were upgraded to DLSS3.8.10, with the exception of Hunt Showdown. All DLSS4 examples are using the latest model via NVIDIA's driver override. Let's get into it, but before we do... Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Ice Whale and their new next-generation Zima Board 2, Powered by the Intel N150 processor with support for up to 16GB of memory, the Zima Board 2 is a high-performance single-board server. Equipped with dual 2.5GB Ethernet ports, dual SATA ports, and PCIe 3.0 expansion, all while featuring the latest Zima OS built-in. Paired with Zima OS, Zima 2 effortlessly transforms into a lightweight NAS, offering one-click RAID setup, remote access, backups, and more, making it easy for users to manage scattered data with simplicity and efficiency. Meanwhile, the Zima OS App Store provides a rich ecosystem of hundreds of third-party apps, turning Zima Board 2 into a versatile home server to meet diverse needs. Zima Board 2 also lets users flash their preferred systems, and with its robust hardware expandability, it can become a self-hosted server or even support advanced setups like clusters, ready for enthusiasts to explore. Zima Board 2 is now live on Kickstarter, so for more information, please check the link in the video description. When examining FSR4 and DLSS4 at 1440p and 4K, we generally found these newer upscalers to be much better at preventing TAA blur than any previous temporal anti-aliasing or upscaling solution. With previous TAA-based tech, there was a noticeable difference between the sharpness and clarity of the image depending on whether you were standing still or moving in the game. As soon as you started moving, there was an obvious loss of clarity, the game became more blurry, and this really ruins the presentation in some instances. With DLSS4 and FSR4, there is a much smaller difference between standing still and moving in terms of clarity, effectively removing the TAA blur we see in motion, resulting in a more detailed, higher quality presentation as you actually move around the game world, which is most of what you do in games. And I'm pleased to say this is also true when using these technologies at 1080p. In some of the examples you have seen so far, DLSS3 is quite blurry in motion even when using the quality mode, and there's a noticeable drop in clarity as soon as you start moving. With FSR4 and DLSS4, the clarity is much improved. Now, DLSS4 is the superior technology at 1080p for texture clarity and TAA blur. Generally, the image is a little sharper than FSR4, but FSR4 is also a huge upgrade over DLSS3 in this area, and AMD's tech really impressed me here. It looks great. Like we found at higher resolutions, this blur reducing capability is basically unchanged at lower modes, so even using the performance mode at 1080p looks a lot clearer than DLSS3, and this is still true of both FSR4 and DLSS4. The FSR3 performance mode was essentially unusable, whereas with FSR4 the clarity is decent and the game looks to be running at a reasonable resolution. When it comes to stability and fine detail, there is a pretty consistent theme when assessing the 1080p footage. DLSS4 is a significant leap forward compared to DLSS3. Often at 1080p, DLSS3 would really struggle to keep the image stable in motion, resulting in aliasing, shimmering, or sizzling, even using the quality mode. Typically, this meant DLSS3 upscaling was a visual downgrade compared to native rendering. DLSS4 is much more stable in comparison, and you're less likely to spot issues like aliasing or shimmering at 1080p using the quality mode. This really opens the door for DLSS to be truly viable at a 1080p resolution, as it not only provides better clarity in motion with less TAA blur, but a more stable presentation as well. Of course, it's not fully free of artifacts, the low render resolution at play here still means there are some issues compared to what you'd see at 4K, 
but in normal gameplay, I was very happy with the quality of DLSS 4 at 1080p. FSR 4 is more of a mixed bag when it comes to stability, and it's clearly not as solid as DLSS 4 at this resolution. How it compares to DLSS 3 using the quality mode depends on the game or even the specific part of the game. For example, in this panning shot in The Last of Us Part 1, towards the start of the scene, FSR 4 is less stable than DLSS 3, but towards the end of the scene, it's more stable. In both cases, DLSS 4 looks noticeably better. As an alternate example, here's Hunt Showdown, and in this game I believe FSR 4 is more stable in a general sense, especially when you see the impact of the mild swaying as you move around. FSR 4 handles that better than DLSS 3. But then in a game like Spider-Man 2, it's less stable, and in Ratchet & Clank it's pretty close to DLSS 3, maybe slightly better. Now DLSS 3 levels of stability from FSR 4 still results in better image quality overall as FSR 4 is much less blurry, so the image in general is more detailed, but AMD still needs to put in some work here to recreate the cleanness we're seeing from DLSS 4 at this resolution. What I will say though is that the FSR 4 performance mode isn't too bad, and doesn't fall away nearly as hard as FSR 3 did for stability at 1080p. In the worst cases, FSR 4 performance is similar to DLSS 3 performance, and in the best cases, it's actually quite a bit more stable, and sits between DLSS 3 and 4. I personally wouldn't choose to use this mode, but it's not that bad considering the render resolution is just 540p. Disocclusion at 1080p is really no different to what we saw at higher resolutions. This is the main area where DLSS 4 struggles compared to DLSS 3, with an obvious downgrade visible at this resolution. There is more sizzling and blurring around characters in third-person games, and as objects disocclude, you're more likely to notice artifact or blur trails in motion, which isn't necessarily ghosting, but a byproduct of DLSS 4's weaker handling of disocclusion. Comparing the three upscalers using the quality mode, in my opinion FSR 4 usually looks the best, though at times it's not hugely different to the DLSS 3 image. Examining FSR 4 relative to DLSS 4, and AMD's upscaler clearly handles disocclusion better, and you can notice this in real-time non-zoomed footage using the quality mode. Of course, like all artifacts, the degree to which FSR 4 is better changes between games. It's much less of an issue in Horizon Zero Dawn than The Last of Us, for example. But in no examples did I find DLSS 4 to outperform FSR 4 in this area. To make matters worse, disocclusion artifacts tend to get worse at lower modes, like the performance mode. Here are the blur trails as a wire passes over some bricks using the quality mode, and here's the same artifact using the performance mode. The lower render resolution results in more noticeable blur trails, and this is why it's hard to recommend the DLSS 4 performance mode at 1080p. These artifacts can be really noticeable in this configuration, much more so than using the same mode at 4K. Hair quality is also very similar to other resolutions in that FSR 4 and DLSS 4 end up looking pretty similar. DLSS 4 can be a little sharper and more stable at times, but if the hair is prone to disocclusion, that's where FSR 4 can end up looking better. The big win here for AMD's technology is that hair no longer looks extremely grainy, which was a significant issue with FSR 3. Across both FSR 4 and DLSS 4, we're getting an upgrade compared to DLSS 3, which can be a bit aliased for hair. Particle and rain quality is also similar to other resolutions, where generally all the upscalers here trade blows. In The Last of Us Spore Test, FSR 4 comes out ahead when comparing the quality modes with more visible particles and less ghosting. However, FSR 4 produced more ghosting, looking at Ratchet & Clank Confetti, with more aliasing as well relative to DLSS 4, which ended up looking the best. In the Horizon Zero Dawn snow test, FSR 4 and DLSS 4 end up looking pretty similar in terms of the quality of the snow particles, while DLSS 3 has slightly less clarity, as we've seen through most of these examples. DLSS 4 is stronger at reconstructing the background behind the snow, so the grass and trees look a bit more natural compared to FSR 4, but this difference is pretty hard to spot unless you're looking for it. In general, either upscaler does a decent job at handling particles. At 1080p, upscale transparencies are pretty similar between DLSS 3, DLSS 4, and FSR 4 when using the quality mode. Elements like fire and holograms are reconstructed pretty well, though there can be some aliasing, grain, and blur in motion depending on the technique. Based on what I've seen, I don't think one technique is clearly better than the others, which is similar to what we've found at higher resolutions. Interestingly though, I do think FSR 4 holds up quite well when looking at the 1080p performance mode. In these instances, DLSS 4 can be a bit grainy or pixelated compared to FSR 4, such as in the fire in Horizon Zero Dawn, or the holograms in Ratchet & Clank. 
At the lowest render resolutions, this can give FSR 4 the edge, which was a surprise to me considering how badly FSR 3 handled transparencies at 1080p. Foliage quality, especially grass, is one of the hardest things to upscale at 1080p, and often ends up looking aliased or grainy in motion. Like we've seen at other resolutions, FSR 4 tends to hold up the best for grass using the quality mode, though it does trade blows with DLSS 4 in some titles. For example, in Hunt Showdown, grass is quite grainy and is prone to shimmering in the DLSS 3 image, whereas both FSR 4 and DLSS 4 are much more stable and less grainy. I also gave a small edge to FSR 4 in Horizon Zero Dawn compared to DLSS 3, though ultimately both are very close. It can flip the other way in some other examples, like The Last of Us Part 1, where DLSS 4 delivers the best image stability for grass, though in my opinion FSR 4 is still superior to DLSS 3. The softness of DLSS 3 in this example kills the detail in the grass, and it just ends up looking like a blurry green mess when using the quality mode. Tree quality though is generally where DLSS 4 takes the lead due to better image stability and more detail. In examples like Spider-Man 2, Horizon Zero Dawn, and The Last of Us, tree branches and leaves are less prone to shimmering in DLSS 4 relative to FSR 4, the latter of which is closer to DLSS 3 in its output. I wouldn't say FSR 4 is horrible or anything here, it's just going to produce stability similar to some of the earlier examples that we looked at. None of the upscalers are particularly great at handling fine tree branches in motion at 1080p, with all producing significant levels of aliasing even using the quality mode. DLSS 4 does deliver better fine detail reconstruction when stationary, but that's far less relevant than the aliasing seen in motion considering you mostly play games by moving around. FSR 4 probably looks the worst here if we're being honest, but it's not all that different to the other technologies. With fence quality, it's a battle of two elements. FSR 4 has superior disocclusion handling, but inferior overall stability compared to DLSS 4, so depending on the type of fence, one or the other element will be the dominant factor in how the fence is upscaled. For example, in The Last of Us with this thicker iron fence, this is mostly a stability problem. And you'll see here at 1080p quality mode that DLSS 4 is much more stable, whereas FSR 4 is closer to or even worse than DLSS 3 in how it reconstructs this element. But if we move to Spider-Man 2 with a thin chicken wire fence, now there are times where DLSS 4 upscales this and it ends up quite blurry, whereas FSR 4 is cleaner and shows more of the background. There are other times where the stability angle is more at play and DLSS 4 does a better job. Typically, FSR 4 sits somewhere between DLSS 3 and 4 in overall fence quality, but it's a good example of how these specific areas to upscaling can play out with one type of item that's common across games. Lastly, I wanted to show some examples of FSR 4 versus FSR 3.1, because throughout the video so far, I've focused on FSR 4 versus DLSS, largely because FSR 3.1 is so bad at 1080p that it's basically irrelevant in the upscaling discussion. But for the sake of completeness, let's see how far FSR 4 has come. It's very apparent with just a few examples that FSR 4 is a night and day difference compared to FSR 3.1. Even using the quality mode, FSR 3 just looks horrible at 1080p, there is so much shimmering and aliasing that it looks like you're playing at a much lower resolution, defeating the purpose of upscaling. FSR 4 is nowhere near as aliased, it actually looks decent and playable, and this applies across every game we've looked at. What's even more striking is that the FSR 4 performance mode at 1080p is still noticeably superior to FSR 3.1 using the quality mode, which is one of those scenarios you probably wouldn't have guessed would occur prior to the release of FSR 4. I'm not even going to show the FSR 3.1 performance mode because it's offensively bad. FSR 4 has well and truly buried older versions. Overall, upscaling at a 1080p resolution has come a long way in 2025 thanks to the release of FSR 4 and DLSS 4. These new upscalers are much better at handling lower resolutions like 1080p compared to previous versions with significant strides taken in overall clarity, blur, stability and detail. A couple of years ago, it was very much hit or miss as to whether upscaling was worth using at 1080p, because the quality loss relative to native rendering could be very noticeable in some games. These days, if you're using the latest version, I think upscaling is quite viable and usable across the board for 1080p gaming. DLSS 4 is the real star of the show here and is the best upscaler for 1080p gaming. It's quite amazing how much more stable DLSS 4 is at 1080p compared to DLSS 3, even when using the higher modes such as quality, though there are massive improvements to the performance mode as well.
DLSS 4 not only removes a lot of the TAA blur that's typically associated with modern 1080p gaming, making the overall presentation much less blurry, it also retains an impressive amount of detail. In most situations, this makes DLSS 4 the better way to play than native TAA rendering because the overall presentation is superior and performance is better. FSR 4 is also quite good at 1080p and is an enormous improvement over FSR 3.1 at this resolution. FSR 3.1 was basically unusable at 1080p in my opinion, even with the quality mode, which was a real issue for AMD considering Radeon's popularity in the cheaper parts of the GPU market, where gamers are more likely to play at 1080p. FSR 4 is quite viable for 1080p gaming. Like DLSS 4, it reduces the blurriness of 1080p gaming in motion, and across most of the areas we assessed, FSR 4 either matched or beat DLSS 3 in image quality at the same mode. This is an incredible step forward considering how far behind AMD's upscaler was at handling lower render resolutions. This is simply far less of a concern with FSR 4. We don't see anywhere near the drop off in quality going from 4K to 1080p upscaling that we were seeing with FSR previously, which is great. With all of that said, FSR 4 is still behind DLSS 4 in overall image quality, and a lot of that is due to DLSS 4's superior stability. This is the main area AMD need to work on because the difference is noticeable at this resolution. Now, FSR 4 is the better technology at handling disocclusion, and overall, FSR 4 is usable and competitive. But if I had to choose one upscaler to use for 1080p gaming, I would choose DLSS 4. As for the minimum viable modes at 1080p, the quality mode for both DLSS 4 and FSR 4 is easy to recommend. Below that, it does get harder to make a solid recommendation, but for different reasons. With DLSS 4, disocclusion artifacts and blur trails become very noticeable at lower modes, especially the performance mode, which I just cannot recommend. With FSR 4, stability gets a bit worse, and it isn't amazing to begin with, so I'd largely stick to the quality mode at 1080p. You might also find that lower modes don't boost performance all that much because the render resolution is so low, so quality typically strikes the best balance. As you might have noticed, there's no performance data in this review, and that's because with the RX 9070 XT, you quickly run into a CPU bottleneck using upscaling at 1080p in these games. This configuration is mostly designed for lower end cards, but I wanted to get this examination out before the RX 9060 series is released, so you have all the information you need before making a purchase. The usual caveats apply here about game support. DLSS is supported in significantly more games than FSR 4, so if you are thinking about factoring in upscaling to your next GPU purchase, keep that in mind. While FSR 4 is decently competitive as an upscaling technology in games that support both FSR 4 and DLSS 4, there are more games right now with DLSS 4 support than FSR 4 support. And if neither technology is available, GeForce owners can typically fall back to using DLSS 3 or DLSS 2, whereas Radeon owners are stuck using the horrible FSR 3.1 or FSR 2.2. AMD still has a long way to go before FSR 4 game support is in a healthy and competitive position, but the technology at least is now in a very solid place. So anyway, that's it for this look at FSR 4, DLSS 4, DLSS 3, FSR 3.1 at a 1080p resolution. I know some people are probably going to be asking, you know, why are you looking at 1080p gaming? That's not really a thing anymore. It's still obviously a very popular resolution for some people. I just thought you might want to know how these upscalers work at a 1080p resolution, especially because of how difficult it is to upscale at 1080p. And as we've seen from things like FSR 2.2, it is possible to make an upscaler that just doesn't work at the resolution. So yeah, obviously great signs from DLSS 4 and FSR 4 at this resolution. If you want to support the hard work that we do here at Hardware Unbox, then please consider supporting us via our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you get access to some pretty cool benefits like our Discord community, monthly live streams, BTS content, and plenty more. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.